uh, CHP that are they're picking up that uh, this pursuit. But again, you can see high speeds now approaching the five freeway. Now this is where that traffic is going to is going to get a little bit heavy here. Uh, staying on the committed to the 710 northbound at this point. That motor officer there right behind the, the suspect vehicle. A stolen vehicle out of Southwest Division of LAPD. And now it's transitioning here. Let's see which way. It's, it might be exiting the freeway here. It might be Olympic going right through that light. Wow. Really fast there. Through that light. A very dangerous situation there. And now back on and surface again, northbound streets. northbound here. We'll try to get you the road. Once again, after leaving the uh, 710 freeway, can't tell if this might be Beverly Boulevard. That's in the area, but that's that's not a guarantee. Gil Levis is going to get us the answer to that in a moment while flying along. Sandra, it's one thing to be going 70 miles an hour on yeah. a uh, freeway. Many Southern Californians do. But it's something else to, to get off the freeway and keep that right. speed up for a while. And we see this driver uh, very erratic. And often when we have these oh, parts, it looks, looks, yeah, yeah, looks like we're pulling now? over. And Whittier this Boulevard here, just off of, of, we believe, Ford Street. Guns drawn here. The LAPD, along with the motor officers there, we believe that might be from the CHP officers here. Suspect getting out of the car and get bring, just coming to her knees there at this point. So it looks like this pursuit is over. This uh, suspect is uh, listening to officers, their commands, and doing exactly what she's being told. But it looks like it is a female driver. And... Uh, Officers will make the approach on the vehicle once they feel that car is secure, once this driver is in custody. They're making the uh, suspect walk forward. So far, she's complying with the officers. And we'll see if another person comes out of that car once she gets on the ground. Now, the next step is for the officers to uh, command anybody in that car to, to exit the vehicle. And we are but watching that point, vehicle very closely, that. yes. It all ended so yeah, quickly. Gil, you were following this yeah. chase at speeds of up to 80 plus miles an hour. And then this driver finally, off of the 710 freeway, simply pulled over, stopped, got out of her vehicle immediately, and now we're watching, and you've got the best view. Tell us as officers move in. They're going to check and clear that vehicle to make sure there's nobody else in that vehicle. They're going to open the back there, and there you go. They're checking all all the doors, all the uh, compartments there, and uh, showing that it's uh, empty there, code four. No one else in the vehicle, so it was just the driver at this point, and they're going to now move in and make the arrest on that female driver. But it's, as you said, Ken and Sandra, a crazy pursuit, a very high-speed pursuit. Uh, it's coming to an end here in the East L.A. area on Olympic, I'm sorry, on, on uh, Whittier Boulevard, just east of the, of the 710 freeway here in the East L.A. area. Gil Levis overhead in Sky 2, thanks. A chase comes to a successful end for the officers in pursuit. And a reported stolen car now brought back a driver this afternoon, getting a lot of extra attention because of our other big story, which is the manhunt for the gunman accused of killing a couple in Irvine and a Riverside police officer overnight. That suspect in custody right now, you can see she's being taken away by LAPD, but there is still this massive search for 33-year-old Christopher Dorner wanted for the murder of one police officer, two civilians in Irvine on Sunday, and then the shooting of two other police officers earlier today. It's a story with so many angles, so many facets, and unfortunately that can lead to confusion. And that was the case earlier today in the search for the suspect, Dorner, early this morning in the South Bay. Yeah, two officers involved shootings, and, and they were both cases of mistaken identity. Our Randy Page continues our live team coverage now, and he has details on those shootings. He's live.